Hey, people. This just got sent to me. Where? Where the fuck is all this going to end? Unless people start standing up real fucking quick, it's going to get nasty, okay? Listen towards the end what he what he tells you, what, they, what law they're trying to bring in, right? That means that if an official can be anybody, okay, just stop and think if you get somebody that that is a hater of you and your family for whatever reason, they're made a public official, right? That means that they can have you busted for whatever the hell they want. Listen to this. Think outside the box before it's too fucking late, people. Don't just jump onto these programs because it's a way of making money, okay? Shit don't end well with, uh, for, for snitches. It really doesn't. Are they trying to literally start some kind of a, a, a civil thing here in Australia, like in America? Like, what the hell? Just listen to this. Picture this. It's late October 2020. And you're at home again, pursuant to Melbourne's curfew, which is now indefinite. There's a knock at the door. Through the living room window, you can see a couple of police cars with flashing lights, a high security divvy van, and a troop of uniformed and masked officers in riot gear. The person knocking, though, is not a policeman. It's actually your next door neighbor. He or she is wearing a lanyard with a laminated piece of paper on it. You open the door because, as we all know, police can now enter your home without a warrant anyway. Now, earlier that day, you'd run into your neighbor on your hour or maybe two or three of daily exercise and made some offhand remark criticising Dan Andrews over Melbourne's lockdown. You didn't think much of it, but unbeknownst to you, your neighbour is actually an authorised officer under the Public Health and Wellbeing Act. They were appointed to the role as one of the state government's, quote, neighbourhood liaisons charged with monitoring potential public health risks in your area. Now, apparently, your earlier criticism of Daniel Andrews over lockdown policy means that there's a chance you may be encouraging others to breach Victoria's public health orders. And that means that you pose a, quote, serious risk to public health. And under the Public Health and Wellbeing Act, your neighbour, the authorised officer, has the power to detain you for as long as reasonably necessary to contain the risk that you pose. So while the police ransack your home to seize your computer, phone, tablet, and literally anything else that they consider necessary, that they want, you're put in handcuffs, put in a divvy van, and driven to some kind of defunct prison that has been repurposed as a public health custodial centre. You're put in a cell, and as the door closes, you have no idea how long it will be until you're released. All you know, you could be held here indefinitely. Now, if you're frightened by any of this, you absolutely should be. Because under a bill currently before the Victorian Parliament, this could happen. Now, to explain why we need to look before the bill, before the Parliament, we need to look first at what Dan Andrews' emergency powers already allow so-called authorised officers to do. Now, to do this, we have to look at the existing Public Health and Wellbeing Act, which was passed in 2008 when John Brumby was Premier and used for the first time during this coronavirus pandemic. Now, as you all know, Victoria has been under a, quote, state of emergency since March. Under Section 199 of the Act, of the Public Health and Wellbeing Act, a state of emergency means that the Chief Health Officer may appoint authorised officers who can exercise the emergency powers. Section 200 outlines what these emergency powers are. And first on the list, under subsection 1A, is the power to, quote, detain any person for the period reasonably necessary to eliminate or reduce a serious risk to public health. The authorised officer is required to review the detention order every 24 hours, but there's no maximum limit. So theoretically, you could be kept in detention indefinitely. And importantly, there is no need to get an order from a court to detain you nor anybody else for that matter, not even Brett Sutton. It's all entirely in the discretion of the, quote, authorised officer. And finally, there is no express right to appeal your detention. Now, as I said, that's the law. That's the Public Health and Wellbeing Act that's already in force right now. 
and it's already being used in the most shocking of ways, not least of all the handcuffing of a pregnant woman in front of her children over a Facebook post, as we of course saw with Zoe Bueller a few weeks ago. So then what's so bad about the bill currently before the parliament? Why will this make the situation, or why could this make the situation so much worse? Look, there are actually quite a few ways in which it expands these emergency powers. Uh, a lot of people have written about the fact that it expands the power of the state to separate parents from their children and put them in foster homes and things like that. Uh, there's th been things written about the power to impose extraordinary limitations on people who are infected with the coronavirus. They, they're frankly pretty terrifying to begin with. But there's been one feature of the bill that's been missed, and in our view, this is the most important and most dangerous part of what Daniel Andrews intends to do. So previously authorised officers, again, the ones ex exercising these emergency powers, could basically only be existing public servants. Now that was bad enough, as we've seen from the examples I've talked about, but at least then they were subject to public service ethic, ex ethics codes and they could be called before public inquiries and things like that. But now if this bill is passed, an authorised officer can be anybody, anybody at all. The bill creates a new provision that says the Secretary of the Department of Health can appoint, quote, anyone they consider appropriate. Yes, literally anyone, provided the Department Secretary is satisfied that they are appropriate. Now, this is obviously hopelessly vague and dangerous in theory, but remember also that in practice, the Department Secretary isn't politically independent. They answer directly to the Minister of Health, in this case, the hapless Jenny Makarkos who obviously answers to the Premier. The bottom line is that Daniel Andrews wants the power to appoint his own officers, his own authorised officers, who will basically be able to use these extraordinary powers in any way they wish. So that's like saying Dan Andrews is creating his own, own little military, is that what it is? Union officials could be appointed to intimidate small businesses, small business owners to speak out against lockdowns. Labor Party officials could be appointed to intimidate members of other political parties. And as I described in the, the top of the, the segment, ordinary people could be appointed as informants to spy on their neighbours. The closest historical parallel that comes to mind is the Stasi, the secret police that operated in communist East Germany, quite possibly the most repressive government agency ever to have existed. Now, like Dan Andrews' authorised officers, the Stasi spied on East German citizens through a vast web of citizens turned informants. Now, look, don't get me wrong, we're not at that stage right now. It's not as bad as the Stasi was in East Germany. But under this bill, we could be. And one way or another, I reckon that we will be. Now, this might sound a little bit unbelievable right now. I get that. but. Plenty of things have happened over the past six months that even I would never have believed. Now, for example, did you ever think that you'd see something like this in Australia, this bloke over the weekend who was arrested on the beach for not wearing a mask? Hey, oh, man, or whatever. That's respect. Please just give that girl my phone. Yeah, please. 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 I haven't done anything. Oh, we believe you. Don't worry. Okay, I was going to give you my driver's license. I'm within five kilometres of my house. I was. I was just asking you why I had to. Oh, more cops for one guy. You've done nothing wrong. Good on you guys. I hope you're proud of yourselves. Or well, consider this woman who had her details taken down by police after holding up a sign saying, open the churches. Uh, struggle to think of any worse symbol of repression of religious freedom at any time ever in Australia, coupled with the disgraceful surveillance we saw from Victoria Police on the Melbourne's Jewish community over Jewish New Year, one of the highest, high, uh, one of the holiest days of the calendar, not to mention the repression of Easter earlier in the year. Well, what about this footage of a Victoria Police member by the name of McLeod, that's M-C-L-E-O-D, that surfaced a few days ago? Sure, sure. Off. What part of that are you having trouble with? Okay, I think you've got an anger problem. No worries. Okay. Walk back. Calm down and explain. I am calm down. Go and do what you're told, mate. Go and do what you're told. 
McLeod, M-C-L-E-O-D. Okay. Again, ask yourselves, did you ever think that these scenes were ever possible in Australia? And ask yourself this, if this is what trained police officers are capable of, what will happen when Dan Andrews can appoint anyone he wants as an authorised officer and give those people the full, full, the full force of his emergency powers? So, a lot of you are probably asking, as you do a lot in your emails and your Facebook messages and your Twitter messages, and quite rightly, what can we do? How can we stop this? Well, we can stop this because people need to stand up, you know? People need to stand up. Stop being a snitch. No, stop doing somebody else's dirty work. Stop doing somebody else's dirty work. When are people going to see that what is going on is just not fucking right? The Victorian Parliament. Now, it's passed the lower house, unsurprisingly, because Dan Andrews has the numbers there. And uh, frankly, every member of parliament who voted for this obscene piece of legislation will have to live, on it, live with it on their conscience for the rest of their lives. But now it comes before the upper house where the Andrews government doesn't have the numbers. Now, the coalition has already indicated they're opposing this bill, and quite rightly, but there are 12 MPs on the crossbench from minor parties who have to make up their minds. So if you're planning on calling or emailing any MPs to make your thoughts known, they're the ones you speak to, the one. Put it this way, people. There's no point speaking to anybody, okay? There really isn't. People need to come to the realisation that these people are going to do whatever they want, when they want, how they want, unless you stand up and fight back, okay? Nobody's coming to save you. Do not look at any government official to come and save your ass, okay? Look what's been going on in Victoria all this time. Has any other, has any other government official stepped in and said, enough is enough? Dude, you're in the fucking wrong. Stop doing that to people not a one not even not even the prime minister of this country so stop waiting on somebody to come and save you stand up and save yourself stand up fight back for your family stand up and stop taking shit stop waiting for any of them to come and save you because they're not interested. They have an agenda. They're working towards that agenda, right? Regardless of what you think, regardless of what you say to them. You go and vote for these people, these same people who don't give a shit about you. They don't care if you put food on the table. They don't care if you have food for your children. They don't care when are people not going to see this what well, when at what point can people not see that for every day that goes by more rights are being taken away it wasn't enough state of disaster state of fucking emergency state of this state of that come on people come on i know that you're freaking smarter than than what i'm seeing you know what I mean? If you can see what these these guys are doing, okay, like I said, they're not there for you. They never have been. They push their agenda. But you fight over them. You elect them. You think that they're going to do right by you. Are they doing right by you? What, by taking your freedoms away? By allowing your neighbour who possibly hates your ass to put you into some kind of a, a prison? Think about that for a fucking minute. Think about that, which is no better than what you did by downloading that tracking and tracing app. You fucked over people that you knew. You fucked them over if you downloaded that. Now they want you to snitch on your neighbour. 